Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to part 13 of our API testing with Rest Assured and Cucumber course. And in this video, we are going to talking about deserializing to POJO classes with Rest Assured. All right, so let's get started. So what does deserialization means in here? So deserialization in here is especially for the JSON or the XML response coming out from the APIs. So essentially we are deserializing the JSON types to the type we are intending to. In our case, it's the POJO classes. So basically it's a plain old Java object classes, which we are about to deserialize our JSON response so that we can play around with it in further operation. So this is what is deserialization all about. And suddenly, why are we deserializing to POJOs? So using deserialization to POJOs, we are telling our code to not use hand-coded codes or JSON strings, rather a strongly typed string which are less prone to error. So these are very, very handy while we work with a very complex data structure or the JSON structure. So in our case, so far in our videos that we have seen all these days, it's pretty easy code, guys. And you might have seen that it is not that complex response or header that we are passing in. And that's why you do not feel the pain of maintaining the objects and stuff. But in real time, while we work with an organizations, you might have seen the API will be giving us a lot of data and a lot of responses, or maybe you need to pass a lot of different header information or a body for a particular post operation. So in those cases, it's highly important that we maintain those headers or bodies in a data structure or in POJO so that we can cross-reference what's really happening behind the scene within our APIs. For example, the code that we have wrote in our earlier videos, something like this, for passing in as a body with an ID of the value that we're passing in, title and author. And as you can see that right now we are hand coding that particular part within a particular step definition. So you can see that if you want to know what is that particular header or the API is actually expecting, you should probably go into the step definition and then you need to cross reference what is the body being passed for that particular request. And similarly, if you want to get a response out, all these days we have been using the response.getBody of the JSON path.get, and then we pass the key value, which is the name or something like that. So then we verify what is that particular response coming in. So these are some of the hand-coded value or something that we should not be doing for a very complex project. For a simple project like what we are discussing right now, everything is fine. But once it goes very, very complex, in order to maintain the responses or the request or the body or the header that we are passing in, it's highly important that we create POJOs or plain old Java objects to ensure what we are passing in. So by creating POJOs, we are ensuring what we are passing as a header or what we are expecting out from a response is known or visible across the code. So for instance, for our post operation that we are doing in, we can see the POJO is going to look something like this. So we can see that there is the ID, title and author. So these things that you are seeing in here, we're just going to create a POJO for the post. And you can see that it has a private ID, private string title, and private string author. And you can see that the constructor is going to take in this value. And then we're going to use the get operation for all the getters and set operation for all the setters. So once we have all these basic POJO structure, we can then start using in and our code start to change something like this. As you can see, currently we are getting the response of a, a body with a JSON path of author, something like this, and we're verifying if the particular item is there within the particular uh, JSON response. We are then gonna deserialize this particular value, something like this. As you can see, we're gonna get the response, and then we are gonna use the POJO class as an array of classes, and you can see that I'm using an as method there, so it is gonna be deserializing our body 
into that particular class which is going to be magically happening using rest assured and once that is done and you can see that we can then call the get author method the getter operation the get author method to see what's really happening behind the scene so this is more structured instead of hard-coded value that you can see in here that we are passing in what is this particular author you know over here as a hand-coded value we're rather using the get author as a strongly typed value so that we can verify it and also play around with it so this is more and more easy to maintain the code rather the one that which is hard-coded in here so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work and how we can change our code to these behavior in a much greater detail. So for that, I'm gonna flip to my IntelliJ IDE. All right, so as you can see, this is the same project that we have been working so long in our course and I have upgraded our IntelliJ IDE to the latest and the greatest version, which is 2019.2. And as you can see, uh, this particular code was updated a pretty long time before and right now we are again starting to support this particular uh, course. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go all the way over here for the get post feature and if I try to run this, you can see that the code is basically gonna run without any problem because our fake JSON server is running behind the scene and you can see that the test has got passed as well, which is pretty cool, right? So now what we're gonna do is, if I go to this particular uh, post operation over here, you can see that I'm gonna get the access token and if I see the author, how I'm getting is, basically I'm getting the author using the response of the get body of the JSON path that I'd get of the author, something like this, which is okay for a small response that we are getting in. As you can see here, if I just go to the postman and if I just try to uh, get the post, you can see that I'm just getting an ID, title and author over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a model or a POJO class and then I'm gonna create it over here within our uh, Java folder so that we can start making use of that particular POJO classes and perform an action. So for doing that, I'm first gonna create a, a POJO and within POJO, I'm gonna create the posts and this particular post class is gonna hold our structure that we just saw in the postman, which is nothing but the ID, title, and author. So I'm just gonna create a private int ID. Similarly, I'm gonna create private string title and private string author. And then we essentially need a getter and setter for this particular POJO class. So for doing that, you can make use of the IntelliJ IDE's generate option, as you can see here. So you can also do an alt insert for doing that. So if I just click this, you can see it's gonna ask me getter. I'm gonna add the getter for all of them. And similarly, I'm gonna alt insert, and then I'm gonna call a setter for all of them. And then I'm gonna do uh, create a constructor for these operation as well. So you can see that it automatically or automatically brings all of these steps for us. So only thing is I gotta paste this guy over here on the top, that's it. So now our plain old Java object class has been created, which is pretty easy and pretty straightforward. We can actually reduce this operation in much easier fashion using what is called as a builder pattern or using a plugin called Lombok. So, which we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this course, but as of now, just stay informed that this is how your post class is gonna basically look like. I'm just gonna save this guy right now, and then I'm gonna go all the way to the get post steps in here. So, instead of getting the response that you are seeing over here, which is something you can do that, but instead of doing in this fashion, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to do a deserialization in here. So I'm just gonna do this response dot get body and if I put dot and if I type as you can see this is basically a deserialization operation available in rest assured. So using this you can actually pass the actual type as you can see in here or you can extend the object or you can use your own custom object mapper type to extend it further for the way that you are expecting. 
But as of now, I'm just going to keep things very simple. I'm just going to call the posts. And as you know, if I just call this particular posts in our code, because I'm just going to pass, given I perform a get operation for the posts, and I'm expecting it to be Karthik, which is crazy, because once you call the posts, uh, it's going to return you a lot of value in here. So it may be wrong. So what we can do is probably we can even change this get operation to something like this so that it returns you uh, just the first value. So post.class, I'm going to do an alt insert for the post.class. And once this is done, I'm then going to do an assert operation. So the assert operation, I'm just going to command the particular piece of code, which is already there. Rather, I'm just going to do something like this. It's going to be posts dot. And if I hit dot, you can see that it brings me up the getter operation, which is going to be the get author. And I'm actually looking for it to be an equals to of Karthik KK, or maybe the author name that I'm actually passing in. So the author name is coming from here, right? So I'm just going to making use of the particular string, uh, which was not the case before. So I'm just going to save this code and then I'm just going to run this particular scenario to see what's basically going to happen. So this time what happens is essentially this code is going to deserialize the value and then it's going to store that value on here. But as you can see, it throws us an error over here and it says that there is an invalid definition exception and cannot construct an instance of POJO of POST. So this error says clearly that it cannot construct an instance of the POJO of POSTS and it also says that no creators like default construct exist. So basically, if you go to our uh, POSTS.java, we don't really have a default constructor in here. We only have a constructor with the three parameters, so we basically require a default constructor which can resolve this issue much easily. So I'm just going to create a default constructor, as you can see in here. Uh, and then if I try to execute this code, this time the code should execute without any problem. And you can see that it has executed and our test card passed. So this is the way that we can actually work with the POJOs where we can actually make use of the strongly typed value instead of hard coding the values that we did before, which was kind of not the case which we should be doing in our code. And this is one way of writing the plain old Java objects, something like this. Uh, and we also create a lot of getters and setter operation. And we can also reduce this operation using the Lombok plugin or using the builder pattern in much easier fashion instead of complicating the telescopic constructors and stuff. As you can see, we have two constructors here. And if you keep on adding many constructors, they are called as telescopic constructors. So we can get rid of all of these and we'll be discussing about that as a separate video in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, you can see that this serves the purpose of how we can get rid of it. In our next video, we'll also discuss how we can work with some of the complex objects, which we have not discussed before instead of the simple structure. And we'll see how we can make use of this plain old Java objects to perform a much complex operation in a much documented and simple fashion. So stay tuned for our next video. Thank you.